Hi everybody, I'm just some guy and I want to talk about this article I saw on Bleeding Cool. It was written by this guy named Joe Glass and it's called The World of Comics Has a Serious Problem, Trolls. People have been writing articles like these for years, targeted at gamers, metalheads, punk rockers, tech geeks, and now comic book fans. It's always the same article, virtually interchangeable, and always with the same complaint. The community is full of bigots and needs to change. This change is always, quote, for the better, and always along progressive lines. The progressive side is always the victim, and always faultless, even if the author admits that sometimes the progressive side acts poorly too. The real blame always lies with the community and its core members, especially those who are straight, white, and male. I came up with all of that without reading the article. That's just from the title. I'm going to go through this article and respond to it on the fly, and I bet you that what I just described is exactly what Joe's going to say throughout this article. Because these people, these progressives, this regressive left, whatever you want to call them, are nothing if not predictable. And, you know, stuff like this, like this article, this is what led to Gamergate. Going after the fans like this is exactly what pissed off so many gamers. The thing is, is that the gaming business had enough of a cushion to be able to take this kind of a hit. The comics industry doesn't. It can't afford to lose a big chunk of its audience. The industry is kept afloat mostly by Marvel and DC. If they blow off a big chunk of their audience, the whole industry burns. So progressives like Joe think they're playing four-dimensional chess. They're not even playing checkers. They ain't even playing tic-tac-toe. This isn't the game. You pull this crap with the comics community, and you will have no more comics industry. It'll be gone. But, you know what, let's get to this article, because I'm sure Joe is just ever so unbiased. He starts off with, and I'm just going to do a voice, just so you can tell who's who. There's something rotten in the world of comics. Yeah, it's called the regressive left. It's something I've noticed for a very long time, sadly, but the last few weeks have seen it feel even worse. True. The SJWs have been lit the fuck up lately. Maybe even the last year, emboldened by the kind of discourse pervading our world now, even down to our politics and societal structures. You're talking about Donald Trump, aren't you? You're barely 50 words into your little rant here, and, and you just had to get the Trump knock, didn't you? Didn't you? That problem is, simply put, trolls. There are no trolls, Joe. People get to express their opinions, especially when you share yours. You don't just get to say whatever you want to say and expect everybody to just agree or stay silent. It doesn't work that way. No. I'm not going to name names here. Pussy. This article isn't about playing the shame game. Oh, but it is about playing the shame game, Joe. I haven't read the whole article yet, but I know where this is going. You're going to bitch and moan about how fanboys have ruined comics with their racism and misogyny and homophobia and transphobia. You're going to claim without showing a strip of evidence that female creators are harassed whenever they post stuff on social media. You're going to say how minorities and women don't do nothing to bring about all the hate. You're going to say that if only the fanboys would change or go away, the community would grow into this beautiful, diverse utopia of representation and inclusivity. And you're going to do all of that by tearing down the people who've supported the comic book industry for decades. But go on, I I'm sure this is going to be completely unbiased. The idea of gatekeepers to the comics community and fandom is hardly new. It's what led to all those offensive stereotypes of comic fans as fat, balding, middle-aged white men living in their mother's basements. Because it was happening. Yep. All those fans were the comic book guy from The Simpsons. Just a bunch of pasty white boys with no friends reading comic books because only the books could deal with their pimple mark faces and shit. Totally unbiased, Joe. Comics felt inaccessible to minorities, women, and people of color for years due to A, a perceived lack of their presence in the material, and B, a threatening, unsafe feeling generated in comic space, whether through language used or the perceived glares of those admitted into that world. Here's the thing, Joe. I'm black. I've been black my whole life. I've been into comics nonstop since 1992, and in that whole time, not one time have I ever felt that comics weren't for me. Not once. Not one time have I ever worried about the lack of minority characters. When I started showing off my work online, not once did anyone try to keep me out because of my race. None of the art that featured black characters got any hate. Nobody told me I couldn't make comics. In fact, most of the time, the response to my stuff was, why hasn't Marvel or DC hired you? When I've gone to conventions, not once has anyone made me feel excluded. Todd Nock and his wife Dawn both remembered me by name and remembered random things I told them three years ago when I went to the con. So I'm not buying this. I'm sure there are plenty of females and, and minority fans who've been treated badly, but this idea that the comic book community has this huge no darkies allowed sign on it is 100% complete bullshit, and I'm not going to let you trash my community like that. Fuck you. 
The why of this, why they would be like this, is largely a simple psychological response. They were made to feel powerless in the world, and unfortunately a natural inclination for humans, a very base response, is to reclaim some of that power by passing along those feelings of powerlessness to someone they feel they can, such as individuals or groups new to the area or community, or those who are themselves seeking a safe place. Dude, that phony power play bullshit has nothing to do with it. This is my community. And like other members of my community, I don't like it when someone who isn't a part of it or who spends all their time trashing it decides that they want in and want to, quote, change it for the better. Yeah, this is a safe space. I get to hang out and talk with other people and nerd out. And I don't have to deal with anybody making fun of me for liking comics or taking them too seriously or liking kid stuff. Anybody who wants to do that is welcome to join. But if you're here to take over or to change it to suit your needs or your political agenda, yeah, you will be bumped hard. Think about that for a second. This is basically the entire discourse of the wider social and political world at the moment. A behavior purposefully manipulated on a larger scale outside of the comics community. What we are seeing in comics is perhaps a microcosm of that. Back to Trump again. Okay, listen up, Joe. You fucking lost. Get over it. You're a grown-ass man. Suck it the fuck up and move on. But social media seems to have magnified things to a scale hitherto unseen. Who the fuck writes like this? Jesus Christ. Okay, look, all social media does is let people be who they really are. If you act a fool on social media, that's because you are a fool. People act the way that they would act if nobody could see what they were doing. And the people that you're white knighting for, they're not all saints. They go online, they pick fights, they tweet snarky remarks, and then they get pissy when someone does it back to them. They're bullies and bigots and all-around assholes. There's a sister who spends all her time pushing and shoving her brother, and then when he pulls her hair, she runs crying to mommy saying that he started it. They're not innocent, dude. And it is perhaps all the more horrifying to see because we are at a time when those women, people of color, and minorities are at least being attempted to be brought into the comics community. You know this is a lie, Joe. And you know that people know that this is a lie. And you know that people know that you know that this is a lie. So why are you lying, Joe? Women have been a part of this community since its beginning. All kinds of folks, be they white, black, brown, khaki, have been a part of this community. Don't sit there and try to erase people like Dwayne McDuffie or Louise Simonson and the millions of female fans and minority fans out there just to play to your fucking narrative. We're here. We've always been here. Stop lying, Joe. However, it has also made it easier for those who would dissent to change to find and target those they feel are ruining their comics. People can voice dissenting opinions on social media? Say it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. And certainly of late, we have seen female creators and editors and trans creators and editors face an insane amount of hate, irrational thinking, and vile speech, and yet the perpetrators have faced little to no reprimanding. That's because there's nothing to reprimand. Heather Antos received a couple of saucy comments amid hundreds of positive ones. And instead of just ignoring the saucy comments, she chose to damsel. The only thing this woman was missing was a fanning couch and a glass of mint julep tea. And all these progressives flocked to her like seagulls to garbage in the street. Doug Tanopel didn't use the correct pronoun when referring to a trans woman who, in the words of Miss Swan, looked like a man. That trans woman chose to lose her shit, even though aside from the wrong pronoun, Tanopel was pretty polite. The only thing to reprimand here is a reaction from the woman and trans woman who couldn't just let it go. Some fights are not worth having, Joe. I don't get into a fight every time some white person says I'm articulate or well-spoken, and I don't lose it when someone says my artwork sucks. Or maybe my ego isn't so fragile that I need constant validation. By the way, neither of those two people are saints. Look through their Twitter feeds and you'll see them engaging in the very snarky, saucy comments they were bitching about. A major part of this may be freedom of speech laws, especially in the U.S., which arguably are not yet caught up to the modern technologies. Thank the Founding Fathers for that. You can't make somebody use language they don't want to use. Freedom of speech allows you to express any opinion, not just the ones the regressive left deems acceptable. From this standpoint, Twitter can stand behind a wall of they have the right to say these things, no matter the moral implications or repercussions. They might try to argue that shutting them all down is not possible, but we know this isn't true. After all, any account that is perceived to have any remotely Nazi content or imagery is banned in Germany, where such things are illegal, and would see Twitter getting sued. You're comparing saying keep your feminism out of comics to Nazi content. You really think those two are remotely close to the same thing. You think it should be illegal to criticize people's comments and content. You think Twitter should be sued because someone tweeted a mean comment. This right here is the reason why freedom of speech is the first amendment. None of the other amendments work unless you have the right to say what you want to say without fear of being silenced. 
It's funny how when progressives want to protect the rights of a few, it always comes with violating the rights of the many. Because since the advent of the internet, people could anonymously throw out their hatred and bile without fear. Um, I hate to break it to you, but the internet didn't magically allow people to send anonymous messages. We've been doing that for ages. Most recently, we just used the mail. Basically, if you didn't put your name on it or return address, nobody knew where it came from. With the advent of social media, this became a more difficult situation, as this element now has access to make their statements, not just into the ether. Ether, spelled E-I-T-H-E-R. Did you read this before you posted it, Joe? Or did you just have to whip out your progressive heart on for everyone to see? Okay, well, I'm here, Joe. Let's see it. Let me get close. Hold on. Let me get there. Let me just... Oh, there it is. It's so small. That's so cute. So I'm going to fix your statement so I can actually read this like a normal person. Here we go. With the advent of social media, this became a more difficult situation, as the element now had access to make their statements not just into the ether, but targeted at individuals and groups. They got to see themselves as digital gatekeepers protecting their community from outsiders instead of welcoming new insights, new fans, and potentially new friends. And this applies to the outsiders too, Joe, many of whom come into the community only to trash it and attack the existing fan base. Go and read these people's Twitter feeds, man. It's a hate orgy. And most of the time, these so-called new fans don't want any new friends. And they'll say that. They'll flat out say that if you don't support their politics or you don't agree with their opinions, they don't want anything to do with you because you're scum. But then they want to be welcomed into the community like everything's cool. Come on, man. If you had an open door policy at your house where anybody was welcome and someone came in and talked shit about your furniture or your family photos or whatever movies you own, would you welcome them? Really? Really? No, you'd boot them out without a second thought. Because it's shitty manners to trash somebody like that. I'm an atheist, man. But I don't go into a church or any religious building that lets me in and start, like, attacking the religion or the followers. They let me in. Why would I attack them? Especially if I wanted to join a community or convert to that religion. That's what progressives sound like. Like people who really don't want to be part of a community, but just want to take over that community and make it theirs. It's normal for people to stop you from doing that. There have been a number of creators who have publicly via social media made troll-like comments themselves. Troll-like, but not actual trolling. How glib. Whether it be making fun of fans who are concerned with the direction of a story, or shutting them down for expressing concerns from a different point of view, actually threatening critics, or calling them idiots or liars because they have a distaste for a site they work for, or other writers at that site, or merely didn't like a review or article they wrote, or expressing social or political views that previously they would have kept to themselves. So, trolling, bullying, and harassing the fan base. Got it. So the next time you wonder why someone might leave a snarky comment under some editor's picture, just go back and read your own words. Actually, we'll read them together just so it sinks in and I'll edit it since you didn't bother to, so it's actually readable by a fucking human. There have been a number of creators who have also trolled on social media, be it making fun of fans concerned with the direction of a story or for expressing a different point of view, threatening critics or calling them names, or expressing social or political views that they would have otherwise kept to themselves. When creators behave like this, Joe, it stands to reason that their fan base is going to act the same way. And publishers have been few and far between in any kind of reprimand against this action. Yeah, because they're in on it. You have Tom Brevoort of Marvel, a senior editor, shitposting online daily. How can Marvel punish any writer or any artist when the head editor does this kind of bullshit? Comics then has... No, no, Joe. No, Joe. The proper word is have... Because comics is a plural. Let's try that again. The comics community then has come to accidentally nurture this environment, even when it has worked against them. No, it hasn't. It's people behaving as people do. You see the same thing with sports or with video games or with fashion. People are tribalistic by nature, and we will pick sides in a heartbeat. It doesn't really matter. It's not exclusive to comics. In fact, progressives do this kind of culling the cult shit all the time. Look at what they did to Lacey Green. Even when it leads to movements pushing back against the trolls such as hashtag make my milkshake. There were no trolls, Joe. It was literally three fucking comments and Heather Antos turned into the biggest damsel this side of fairy book land. If she had damseled any harder, there would have been a black boy strung up on a tree. She went full on birth of a nation damsel. This may be the biggest problem facing comics right now. If the trolls gatekeeping persists, it will continue to put off new people from wanting to join the community. Even despite the best efforts of creators and publishers. We need to foster an environment where this kind of hatred, this kind of ownership, this kind of moral wasteland can no longer be permissible. You're not getting rid of the ownership element, Joe, that comes with having a community. What you can do is stop the moralizing and the politicking and the grandstanding. 
Stop attacking the fan base. Stop demonizing straight people and white people and men. Stop with the victim mentality. Stop making every disagreement a sign of someone's unchecked privilege or covert bigotry. What needs to be found is a way of turning these examples of bad behavior into actual conversation. And I do not mean by the minorities or communities being affected. It is not the job of these groups to educate trolls. They are spending enough time dealing with the fallout and trying to live their lives. And you need to stop infantilizing minorities and women. Stop giving them a pass for their shitty behavior and acting like they do nothing wrong. If you keep allowing certain people to get away with being assholes, everyone else will eventually start going, Hey, how come she gets to be a snarky bitch, but I gotta keep my mouth shut? You can't have it both ways, Joe. We have seen examples again on a wider stage where the discourse of the world has moved away from healthy debate and education and towards this new paradigm of statements designed to send people into a rage, preventing all reasonable conversation. Back to Trump again, Joe. Okay, well, let's go there. Had the left bothered to listen to anything that the Trump supporters said, Donald Trump probably wouldn't be president. But instead of having a healthy debate, the left, and not just the progressives, but most of the people who call themselves liberal too, they went after these folks, calling them racist and sexist and homophobes. They had zero interest in the lives of these people or their experiences and couldn't have cared less about any of these people's troubles. The left was all too ready to name call and to vilify anybody who didn't agree with them to the point that they even alienated many of their own base, like me. You can't have a reasonable conversation if you are being unreasonable. It is unreasonable to think that your views are inherently correct. It is unreasonable to think that your views are beyond question. It is unreasonable, Joe, that you and only you get to decide what is and isn't acceptable discourse. That is what breeds anger and resentment. We cannot allow the validation of attacking and hurting minorities, or indeed anyone. No one is attacking or hurting minorities, Joe. No one's doing that. Your side is attacking and hurting the fan base, and you and people like you seem to all too ready to just let that happen. Why do you think that'll work? What do you think is going to happen from that? Once you've run off all the bad people, what community do you think you'll have left? Because I can tell you, look at what happened to the atheist community after Atheism Plus sank its teeth in. They destroyed that community from the inside out. Look at magazines like Slate and Vanity Fair. Same thing happened there. Look at the gaming press. Same thing happened there. Gamergate was a response to that happening. This stuff rots a community. From the inside out, it turns into the inner and outer party from 1984, where any dissent, no matter how small, is crushed and everyone rats each other out. That's not much of a community, Joe. It sounds more like a dictatorship. We need the comics community to change. No, we don't. There's nothing wrong with the community. Everybody doesn't agree with your politics. Everybody doesn't agree with your opinion. Everybody doesn't want the comics community to turn into a feminist discussion on why toxic masculinity leads men to drawing women with thin waist and big breasts. The problem is with people like you who want everything to go their way. That's not how the real world works, and it shouldn't be. You want to be a part of this community? Fine, join in. But understand, this community isn't about you and your special interests, and you need to stop trying to use it as a soapbox to peddle your fucking politics. We don't want it. So keep it to your fucking self. But I've got a question for you and other people like you, Joe. If you think this community is such a bastion of hate and bigotry, why do you want to be a part of it? It'd be like my black ass trying to join the KKK. Why would I want to be a part of something that I think is about hating me and keeping me out? Progressives trying to be a part of the comics community makes it seem like they really don't believe what they're saying about the community. Like they're just lying about it, being full of bigots as a way of shaming the fan base or silencing them so that progressives can take over. You can try, but you won't have a community and you won't have any comic books. Your progressives books don't sell. Not even progressives want to buy them. But if you're so sure it'll work, well then make your own community. Build it from the ground up and prove me wrong. Go make your own comic book companies. Go put out your little squirrel girl books, your little unstoppable wasp books, your little feminist Thors and your hipster bat girls, go put those books out and prove me wrong. In the meantime, I'll keep hanging out with these so-called racist white fanboys who pay me hundreds of bucks for a commission because, you know, they just hate my black ass. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.